Okay, thank you all very much for joining us to complete the second part of the probability distribution scenario. We finished off with the last part on the binomial distribution, and today we are going to move on further with the normal distribution and two more uh, distributions that follow. So with the normal distribution, if we would recall what we did earlier, we describe a binomial distribution of 10 coin flips and a 50% probability of coming up heads, mainly that is a fair coin. So that is the binomial distribution, the binomial there, and then in parentheses, the number of coin flips, which is 10, and then the probability of obtaining heads, which is 0.5 or 50%. So the idea is what would happen if we also have a binomial distribution of a thousand coin flips with a 50% probability of getting heads. And then we will try and visualize both distributions and observe what is really going to happen. So let us go into R and then practice that. Now you notice that we have the subsection in the R script known as the normal distribution. And I have taken the time to import two libraries that I used in creating a function known as compare distributions, uh, which will take a function of two distributions that we're going to give it. So it could be a binomial distribution and then a normal distribution. It could be a Poisson distribution, a geometric distribution, any distribution that you give it, it is going to create a histogram of the simulation for the two of them and then creates a uh, two rows and one column uh, arrangement of the of the two distributions that you're going to create. So we are looking at a binomial distribution. Yeah. So a binomial distribution of 10 coin flips and then a 50% probability of obtaining heads. And in order to do that, I'm going to create an object called X. And then we are going to simulate an R binom function of a hundred thousand draws. So we'd simply say n equals a hundred thousand draws. And then the size equals one and then the probability uh, 0 0.5 getting head. So we are simulating a fair coin. And I believe from the first part, we really know what the R binomial function actually does and what arguments can be set in there. We are looking at 10 coin flips. And so if I make the size equals 10, then we are going to look at a 50% chance of getting heads, okay, out of this 100,000 uh, simulation. So when we are done, I would like us to create a histogram of the distribution. And so by running this line of code and then creating a histogram, you notice that we have the most occurring number of heads would be the five. And that is because we are simulating a fair coin because the probability is 0 0.5. And so if you have the 10 coin flips and that is a fair coin, then chances that when you flip all 10 coins, you should get five heads and five tails. So you would be getting for a hundred thousand draws, most of the time you'll be getting five heads. And that is why you see uh, the five having the highest bar representation in the histogram. Okay, so we are simulating 100,000 draws. And I believe from the very first part of the, of the lesson, we got to realize why we needed to simulate 100,000 draws. We demonstrated the simulation for 10 draws, 100 draws, 1,000 draws, 10,000 draws, and 100,000 draws. And we got to realize that for binomial distribution, being able to get the exact probability density, we needed to draw 100,000 observations because that was what yielded the closest answer to the true probability density that we were looking for. So a thousand draws, a hundred draws would do, but the probability would deviate from the true probability. And so a hundred thousand draws gets us close to the true probability density. So we are flipping 10 coins at a time and they happen to be fair coins. And so when we plot the histogram of the distribution, the binomial distribution, we notice that five was the most frequent occurrence in, in that random event. So the question was, what would happen if we try to toss a thousand coin flips? So in this case, we are just gonna have 
our 100,000 draws, and then our size would be 1,000 coin flips. And then we are simulating a fair coin, so 0 0.5. And if we should run that and create a histogram, then we are getting this sort of distribution, which closely resembles what we know as the normal distribution. When your sample size is very large, then you approximate a normal distribution if you get this term in statistics, okay? Right. The idea that with a large sample size, with a, with a thousand coin flips, a thousand or more coin flips, we approach a normal distribution. We would like to go back to the slides and then try to get a gist about what this run normal distribution is all about. So the normal distribution is described by two parameters, the mean and that of the standard deviation, right? So we have the normal distribution and then in parentheses, we have the mean represented by the Greek letter mu and then the standard deviation represented by the Greek letter sigma. So R provides the R norm function, um, which takes in three set of arguments. N is the number of observations, in which case we call it the number of draws, and then the mean and then that of the standard deviation. So we are going to look at the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So in that, we will go ahead and simulate a binomial distribution of 1,000 coin flips with a 50% chance of getting hit. And then we approximate this to a normal distribution and compare the histograms, right? And then we need to recall that the expected value of a binomial distribution, X, is actually the size times the probability. And then the variance is the size times probability times one minus probability. So we'll go ahead and simulate the binomial distribution, approximate it to the normal distribution and see what we actually get and compare these two distributions, whether they are similar. So just like we've done, I would like to call this one binomial. And then I am going to simulate a 100,000 draws with a size of 1,000, and then a probability 50% of getting hit. And after we have simulated this, first and foremost, if we try to create a histogram of this binomial distribution, we get something that is very close to the normal distribution. But we'll have to compare it with the the normal distribution itself and see whether they are identical. So the normal distribution will take in three sets of arguments as shown on in the slides. We use the R norm function and then it takes in the N, the mean and that of the standard deviation. So as for the number of observations or draws, we'll just set it equal to the 100,000 draws that we made for the binomial distribution. But the mean, we want it to be equal to the mean of the binomial distribution. And then the standard deviation also equals the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. And the first thing is we know that the expected value, the expected value of a binomial distribution is simply the size multiplied by the P, right? And then the variance of the binomial distribution is also the size times P times one minus P. Or we can just go ahead and find the mean of the binomial by just passing the binomial object into the mean function. And we can also find the variance of the binomial distribution by passing this object into the variance function. But we want to calculate this manually and do some assignment in here. So here, I'm just going to call this the expected value. So the expected value, and I'm simply going to say that we tossed a thousand coin flips. So we are going to multiply by the probability 0 0.5. And then the variance, so let me just call it variance, is going to be the size, which is 1000. And then we multiply by the probability, which is 0 0.5, and then we multiply by one minus the 0 0.5. And that would give us the variance. 
So after getting the variance, we can go ahead and find the standard deviation by taking the square root of the variance. So we are just doing this manually. So all that we are trying to do here is that we have simulated 100,000 draws with 1,000 coin flips and a 50% chance of getting heads. And so we save this into this binomial distribution, right? And so with a thousand coin flips and then a 50% probability of getting heads, the expected value is simply the thousand, which is the size times the probability, 0 0.5. Then the variance is going to be the size times the probability times one minus probability, and that gives us the variance. And then we need to get a standard deviation. And so we pass the variance object into the square root function, and then we end up getting the standard deviation. So let me run this line of code and then run this line of code to get a variance and then run this one too to get the standard deviation. So all that we are going to do right now is that we are going to look at the normal approximation, the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So we are going to use the our norm function where our n would be equal to the 100,000 draws. And then the mean would be the expected value of the binomial distribution with 1,000 coin flips and a 50% chance of getting hit. So I'm going to say that the mean equals the expected value. And then the standard deviation would be equal to the square root of the variance, which we have saved into the object called stddev. So I'm just going to pass that to the standard deviation in the R norm function. So the expected value and that of, uh, the expected value passed to the mean argument in the R norm function and the standard deviation also passed to the SD argument in the R norm function simply happens to be the expected value and standard deviation of the binomial distribution with thousand coin flips and a 50% chance of getting hit. So we want to see what this distribution would look like if we pass that to the our norm function. So let's save this one as normal. Run that. So in which case, let me comment this one out. Right. So now we have the normal distribution where of a hundred thousand draws where the mean equals the expected value of the binomial distribution with thousand coin flips and 50% chance of getting hit and the standard deviation also is a standard deviation of the binomial distribution that we have actually run up here. So the object is binomial and that of the normal distribution is also called normal. So if we plot a histogram of this normal distribution, then we are also getting a normal distribution as usual, right? But I want to compare the binomial distribution with that thousand coin flips and that of the normal distribution that we've had here. So we've created a function known as compare distributions, and I'm going to pass into it the binomial object that we have created up here. Yeah. And then we're also going to pass in the normal that we have also created as a result of the binomial distribution and compare them. So I'm going to pass the normal in there and run that. Okay, could not find this function, right? So that means I have not run the function. So, let me place my cursor here, run the function. But I think in order for the function to work, I need to load these two um, packages. So the tidyverse, because it contains some ggplot function in there. And then the patchwork, the patchwork allows us to patch um, multiple graphs uh, together. Like for instance, I just want to place the first distribution on top and then the second one below it. So I just say P1 divided by P2. When I saved these graphs into the object P1 and then P2 respectively. So now that I have loaded the tidyverse, I can go ahead and also load the patchwork. And then I can now use my function, compare distributions, and then pass in the two distributions that we've created. So the binomial and that of the normal. So when I run this now, we end up getting two distributions, the first one for the binomial distribution, and then the second one for the normal distribution, right? So you can see that um, they are normal, okay? They are fairly normal, right? So when you have um, 
and, and a lot of coin flips, then it means that the distribution that you get from flipping these coin flips lots would approach a normal distribution. Let's go back to the slide. So now we'll move on to the Poisson distribution. Now, when you flip so many coins, but each has a very low probability of getting hit, then what is going to happen? So like, for instance, if we should simulate a binomial distribution with a thousand coin flips, and then a one out of thousand chance of getting hit, okay, which means the probability is 0 0.001, a one out of thousand, then what is really going to happen? So let's go ahead into R and practice that. So under the Poisson distribution, we are going to simulate a binomial distribution. So let's have some comment here. So simulate a binomial distribution with 1,000 coin flips and a one out of 1,000 chance of getting hit, right? And then we can do this using the R by norm function. And then we simply pass a hundred thousand draws. So we say N equals, I normally like to bring the argument names. Okay, so we know what we actually write in. So a hundred thousand draws, and then the size is going to be a 1000 coin flips. And the probability is simply one out of thousand. So we just divide one by thousand. Okay, and you notice that the one divided by thousand is simply 0 0.001. Okay, so we have a very slim chance of getting hit when we flip this thousand coins and then we draw our simulation. So as at this point, if I go ahead and save this object into X, and then I go ahead and create, for instance, a histogram of this distribution, then you will notice that the highest number of occurrence would be that of zero because there is a very slim chance of getting hit. So you can see that zero, um, the, the number of heads would keep on decreasing with the Poisson distribution. Naturally, the Poisson distribution in its application is, for instance, if you kind of, if you are modeling a situation where you do not really care about the total, like for instance, if you are a researcher and you want to know the number of whales that actually come out to the open sea um, every day, you are counting that number of whales. Now compare that to the total number of whales in the entire world. You do not care about the total number of whales that exist in the world, but you're only choosing one part of maybe the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and counting how many whales that you are likely to, to see over there. So you are only counting a fraction of the total, all right? And this is a typical case of the Poisson distribution. Or maybe you are running a shop and you do not care the total number of people that happen to live within the city, but you are interested in how many people walk into the shop. So it is a counting you are you, you are working with counts, all right? Uh, you start off with those, uh, maybe if nobody enters the shop or one person or two person, you start counting from there. And that is the Poisson distribution, all right? So the idea that when we flip 1,000 coins and then um, we actually have a very low occurrence, a very low probability of getting hit, we are actually simulating what we call a Poisson distribution, all right? Or let me put it this way. Once we have looked at this distribution of this Poisson, you know, at the end of the day, we have just given it the name as Poisson, but we've simulated a binomial distribution. So what is this intuition behind what we've just done? Okay, because all we can see is that we have a thousand coin flips. So the sample size is large and then we have the probability as one out of thousand. So the probability is really, really low. So what, what are we trying to describe right here? Let's go back to the slide. So at this point, we have the Poisson distribution, uh, which is given by only one parameter, that is the lambda. The lambda happens to be the mean of the binomial distribution, okay? So note that the mean of the binomial distribution with size 100 and probability one out of 1,000 is one. Remember that a binomial distribution, the expected value or the mean is simply the size times the probability. So if the size is 1,000 coin flips and the probability of getting hairs is one out of 1,000, then we simply multiply the size thousand by the one out of thousand. And that simply is one. 
that one there, which is the mean of the binomial distribution, is what is passed into the Poisson distribution, which is represented by the Greek letter lambda. So the idea that you have a very huge sample size when n is very large, and but you have a very low probability means that the distribution approaches a Poisson distribution. So we model that using Poisson distribution. So simply put, anytime you have you are dealing with distribution, probability distributions, and the sample size is very large, but you have a very low probability of occurrence, then you would approximate this using the Poisson distribution. So just like I described, the lambda is actually the mean of the binomial distribution there. So R provides the R poise function, and it takes into set of argument N, which is the number of observations or draws, and then the lambda, which appears to be the mean, um, we, let's call it the mean. Not technically, we are just going to say the mean of the binomial distribution because we are moving from a binomial distribution to a Poisson distribution, all right? So um, if you are simulating that binomial distribution with very large sample size, but very low probability, then um, we are dealing with a Poisson distribution and you can approximate this using the r poise function, right? Let us go right back into R and you notice that by flipping 100,000 um, um, uh, draws, sorry, 100,000 draws with 1,000 coin flips and the probability one out of 1,000, when we plotted the histogram, you would notice what we actually had, okay? Uh -huh. Each time we do that simulation, there is just less chances of getting heads. So you can see that it is mostly like a right tail kind of distribution. All right. And so let's go ahead and use the R poise function. So we have the R poise function where we pass in our M and then the lambda. So if the lambda equals one, so let's have a hundred thousand draws. Sometimes whenever you are using a function and you are not really sure what to do, you can go ahead and set it out. So you can just simply type the question mark and then the R poise function. And that is a Poisson distribution right here. So you can see that the R poise takes in the N, which happens to be the number of random values to return, which we simply call the number of observations or draws. And then the lambda happens to be the mean simply. So by running this R Poisson, let's save that into Y, for instance. And then we also create a histogram of the Y. So if we run this and then run that, you can see this is very close to the binomial distribution with that very small probability, right? Very, very, very close. So if we use the compare distributions that we created, so compare distributions, and then I pass in my X, which was the binomial distribution of 1,000 coin flips and one out of 1,000 chance of getting heads. And then the Poisson distribution with a lambda of one. And I believe you know where the lambda of one is coming from. It is simply the size of the binomial distribution times its probability. So if we compare these two distributions, then you will notice that they are fairly the same, all right? Fairly the same. This is also what we refer to as a Poisson um, approximation to the binomial, right? So we can try to look at various distributions with different um, um, lambda uh, means, okay? So like, for instance, we can just go ahead and say, let's call this one flips, and then we would simulate a Poisson distribution of 100,000 draws with a lambda of, let's say 0 0.1. Then we are going to do that for a number of means. So we are just going to have maybe one, and then let's have five, and then let's have 10. And let me simply call this one flips one, flips two, flips three, flips four. Now we like to have all of these um, distributions on one graph with two rows and two columns. So let's try if we're using the base graph, let's see how we're going to do this. So we'll use the function called par and then we pass in 
Par actually is a short for some kind of partition. MF row would be a vector of two rows and two columns. So that we are going to end up creating a histogram of flips one. And let me copy this and paste them down here. So we have flips one, flips two, flips three, and then flips four. So by running this line of code, the path to a two by two kind of layout, then we can plot the first one. Uh, figure margins too large. Okay, that has to do with the size of the plot window, okay? So these are some of the issues that we normally encounter. All right, so let's do that again. So starting from this code, and then I run that good, this, this one and that one. Okay, so what can you observe from these plots? Now you can see that, okay, you know something, I would like to bring the lambda values in there. So I'll say the main equals, then I'll say that I have lambda equals 0 0.1. So let, let's pull this one a little bit. So we have, I will copy this one down here. So like that. All right, so for the first one, the lambda was 0 0.1 and then the second one lambda was one and then lambda was five and then lambda was 10. All right, so let's run that again. Okay, so you can see that when the lambda value, which is the mean of the Poisson distribution is very small, okay? That is, you have a very slim chance of getting hit. You can see that we have the largest proportion belonging to the number of tails, which is the value of zero, okay? But the number of heads are very small in occurrence, even after drawing 100,000 observations. Okay, and then even for that 100,000 observations, you can also notice with, with 1,000 coin flips, each has a 1,000 coin flips kind of outcomes, right? So when the lambda equals one, then you would see that so we have a number of tails um, having the largest proportion than the number of heads. But as the lambda keeps on increasing, then it means that we have increasing probability in that of the binomial distribution. And so it approaches a normal distribution. So you can do that simulation for the mean of the Poisson distribution, 0 0.1, 1, 5, 10, 100, or any sort of value that you get. But one trick that you need to understand about the choice of the lambda size, that is the mean of the binomial distribution, is that if you have the thousand coin flips and the probability as one out of thousand, then the expected value of this binomial distribution is simply thousand times one out of thousand, which gives you one. So lambda equals one gives you an idea about uh, what sort of binomial distribution and the probability of the occurrence of heads that you are kind of simulating, okay? If your lambda equals five, then perhaps what would be the probability if you flip a thousand coins and the probability so that when you multiply the size by that probability, you should be getting the mean, the expected value of the binomial distribution as five, okay? So that will require some kind of mathematics in there, right? So if you have a thousand and then you multiply by say one out of 200, you are getting five. So it means that it is just like flipping a thousand points with one out of 200 chances of getting hit. Now, Compare the one out of 200 chances of getting hit to one out of 1,000 chances of getting hit. So you can see that this would be the mean of the Poisson distribution, one with one out of 1,000 chances of getting hit. And then the mean of the Poisson distribution, five, that is a binomial distribution of 1,000 coin flakes with one out of 200 chances of getting hit. So this one has probably um, a higher chance of getting hit than that of the one out of 1,000 probability. That is why when we examine the distributions for the various lambda, you notice that as lambda keeps on increasing, we are putting a, a normal distribution and the number of heads, we are getting more number of heads with each time um, the lambda size also grows. 
Now, there are some interesting properties about the Poisson distribution that we need to look at. That is, the expected value of the Poisson distribution is simply equal to the lambda. And then the variance of the Poisson distribution is also equal to the lambda. So these are just very kind of interesting properties of the Poisson distribution, and they yield the same sort of lambda value that you actually give it. And if you wanted to really demonstrate that, you can take it, for instance, when you flip, um, when you draw 100,000 observations with a lambda of, say, 1, and then you go ahead and find the mean of x and you find the variance of x, you will notice that they are all equal to 1, approximately, because 0 0.99 is simply 1 and the 1.002 is simply 1. So these are some very interesting properties about the Poisson distribution. So the expected value and the mean, the expected value and the variance are both equal to the lambda value. Now, geometric distribution. So assuming that you flip a coin with 10% 10 probability, 10 probability of getting hit, the idea is that how many times would you have to flip the coin until you get the head, right? So you could get the head on your first trial. So you have a coin, all right? And then you are flipping it many times. Now, the idea is that for how many times would I have to flip the coin until I get a head? Now, when you flip the coin for the first time, you may get the head that very first time. Or you may even toss the coin about 10 times before getting the head the 11th time. Or you could be standing here flipping the coin for 200 million times before even the head appears. And so we are just trying to picture that idea of um, flipping a coin and it has a, some kind of small probability of getting the head. So how many times would you have to flip the coin until you get heads? All right. This idea is what we mean by the geometric distribution. But before we use the function provided by R for doing that, we'll, we'll just go ahead and explain it more intuitively for us to understand what we mean by the geometric distribution. So a situation where you wait for a random event to occur is known as geometric distribution. So just like we're saying that you have a 10% probability of getting hit. So how many times would you have to toss your coin until you get hit? It could occur on the first trial. It could be on the hundredth trial. It could be on the thousand trial, or it could be you could be standing here all day and tomorrow before the head actually happens. So that is the idea about the geometric distribution. So what we're going to do is why don't we go ahead and simulate waiting for head in a hundred draws? That means we have a binomial distribution with a single coin flip, but we're going to flip it for a hundred times. So a single coin flip, we flip it for hundred times. So the number of draws will be hundred. Then the size, the coin flip will be one. And the probability is 10% probability of getting here. So 0 0.1. So let's go into R and practice that. So we go ahead and let me just call it flips. And then we will go ahead and simulate N equals 100, but our size is a single coin flip and then the probability is 0 0.1. So that is simply a bias coin. So how many times would we have to do that in order to obtain the head? Now, before I go ahead and run this, okay, I want this one to become a random event. So um, let me start with maybe our binome and let's only make one draw for a single coin flip and then the probability 0 0.1. So we are just going to do this sort of simulation and see when the head will appear. So we are waiting for the head to okay. So I'll run this one. And the first trial, I get tails, so zero. Great. It is so wonderful that just at the second trial, we happen to get the head. Now let me clear it and then run it again. So we get zero. The second trial, zero. The third trial, zero. The fourth trial, zero. Like that, so we could be waiting here all day until some number of trials before we even get hit. So the idea that we are waiting for a random event to occur, just like we said, is known as the geometric distribution, right? So that one was for just a single draw, okay? Each time we flip the coin. But then we are going to make a hundred draws. And so if I highlight this line of code and run it, then you would notice that for that 100 draws, we had 0, 0, 0, 0. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So you notice that 
for the first seven trials, we did not get the head. But for the eighth trial, that was when we had our head. And then the ninth trial was tail. The tenth trial was a tail. And then the eleventh trial was a head. Then we had all tails until we actually had the head. So the idea is that under what circumstances would we have the head appearing the first time? That is the target. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I want to store this one into flips and then simulate it again. Now, remember, if I, if I run this line of code, for instance, and then I print the flips, you notice that the very first trial, I had the head. So we are just waiting for the head to appear. And just at the first trial, we had the head. Then I think we are done, okay, with this idea of geometric distribution. I can run it again. And then you notice that the head appears somewhere here. Look at where the head was. You don't know when it's going to happen, but you are waiting for it to happen. And you are not going to get the same result as I am getting here, okay? Unless I do something that we call set a seed. When I set a seed, the, the exact results that I get here is what you're going to get. But let's know that probability distribution is all some kind of random event. So although I am getting this sort of result, at the moment, I am not expecting that if you run the same line of code, you are supposed to get the same result, but you need to understand the intuition behind it all, all right? So if I wanted you to get this exact same replica of results that we have here, then I have to set a seed and you also follow the seed setting, okay? So like, for instance, if I set a seed using the set of seed function and I pass in any random number like one, two, three, any kind of combination of numbers, you can do that. So if I set the seed one, two, three, and I run this, so let me clear the console first. So I run this, and now I draw 100 observations with a single coin flip and a 10% chance of getting heads, and then I run this result. You notice that the first head appeared um, at the fifth trial, okay? So once I've set this seed, if at your end, you also run this line of code, set the seed, and then you pass in the one, two, three, and then you run the same line of code and print it, you are going to get this same result, exactly the same result with, with no alteration, all right? So the set of seed allows for what we call reproducibility, okay? So what I get is what you're going to get, even if the process is truly random, because I set a seed, what I get is what you're going to get, okay? But the whole idea is not for us to be replicating the same sort of results because it's a random trial, and so we're expecting just anything that really happens. Now that I have run this line of code, a binomial distribution of 100 draws with a single coin flip and then a probability 10% of getting heads. And by printing the result, this is what we have. If we want to know when the first head appeared, then it means that we would first of all use a function called which, all right? Which, the which function. And then we just try to tell R where exactly the heads appeared during the simulation. So all we are going to do is we'll just say flips equals one. So R should tell us exactly where our flips result that we had from the binomial distribution was exactly equal to one. So if I run this line of code, you'll notice that it appeared, head appeared the fifth time, the 11th time, the 20th time. So the idea is that we have head appearing here for the fifth time. Here would be the 11th time. Here would be the 20th time. This would be the 24th time. This would be the 31st, 32nd. And then it appeared again at the 87th time. All right. So we are just trying to ask for where heads appeared from that 100 draws that we made. But we are very much interested in the very first time the head appears. So this actually is a vector of the positions of where heads appeared during the simulation. So we are just going to index it using the square bracket and then passing in the first number where we actually had the heads. So if I run this, you will notice that it gives us five, which means when we simulated the binomial distribution of 100 draws and a single coin flip with a 10% chance of getting head, the first time the head appears was the fifth time. Now, because it is a random event, 
um, and I have set the seed, I want it to behave randomly. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say that the R by norm of N equals 100, then the size equals one and the probability equals 0 0.1. Now for this result, I want R to return to me where exactly the result was one. And then I'm going to pass all of this into the which function. And if I run this, it is just going to give me instances, locations at where um, the heads appear. But I need the very first one, so square bracket one. So remember that the same sort of scenario for what I have highlighted here is what we stored into the flips. So just by saying which flips equals equals one. All right. And then we are grabbing the first instance the head appears. So let me highlight this line of code and click on run. So you notice that in that hundred draws, head appeared the fourth time. Let's run it again. This time around, it appeared a second time. This time around, head appeared the 27th time. Whoa. It appeared the first time. That's wonderful. We are waiting for that event to happen. It appeared the ninth time. So for that hundred draws, each time we run this, we notice that there are times that the head actually appears. Now, let me give you that intuition behind this geometric distribution. The intuition is that you may be working in a factory and you are working with a machine, all right? And the machine usually breaks down at certain points in time. So you want to actually refer to, you want to try and estimate when the machine would tend to break down so that you can call in the, the, the repairer on time to, to service it, okay? So you are waiting for the machine to break down. This is the idea about the geometry distribution. So the machine could break down today. It could break down tomorrow. It could break down a week from today. It could even break down one month from today, all right? Or one year from today. So you are waiting for the machine to break down. This is the idea of the geometry distribution. So when is the machine going to break down? This is where geometric distribution comes into the modeling situation. Right. So you notice the probability distribution gives you that intuition into what we refer to as statistical inference. Right. So um, now that we are drawing 100 observations and a 10% chance of getting heads with a single coin flip, and we want to know after how many trials we would be getting um, the heads, each time we run it, it is going to give us a, a different outcome. So here it tells us that. For that 100 draws, the head appeared at the 14th time, the first time at the 14th time. If I run it again, then it appeared at the 19th time, okay, for that 100 draws. Now, R provides another function called the replicate function. That is, it is used to replicate some kind of distribution over and over again. So you know that if we want to, if we do that random simulation, this is the first time the head appeared. This is the first time the head appeared for the 100 draws again. If I run it again, this would be the first time head appears for that 100 draws again, which is six. But do we have to keep on running this same line of code and knowing when head would appear each time we make 100 draws from that simulation? So we can replicate for a number of times, like. 10 times. So we are going to draw 100 observations from the coin flip. When would be the first time head appeared? We, we do that one at an instance. And then the same 100 draws again, when would be the first time head appeared? Then another instance, when would be the first time head appeared? Another instance of 100 draws, when would be the first time head appears? So we can replicate these 100 draws over and over again. And so we'll just go ahead and use what we call the replicate function in R, which is part of the base package. And it takes in only N, which is the number of times you want to replicate, you want to repeat the simulation. And then the second one is expression. So the expression you give it, at what point in time would we be getting the head? Okay, whenever we are drawing that 100 observations. So I'm just going to set my n equals 10 and then the expression to be equal to this entire code. Okay, let me write it. So I'm just going to say 
which, okay, which where they are binome of 100 draws of a single coin flip and the probability of obtaining the head is 10%. At what point in time did we get the first head? Did we get one but the first head like that? It's kind of a very long uh, code, but if you follow what we are trying to do, just copy this entire line of code and paste it right here, okay? So you just give it for 10 consecutive times. You make the 100 draws. So if you run this line of code, it means that for the first 100 draws, head appeared the first time. Then when we made another set of 100 draws, the head appeared the 50th time. When we make another set of 100 draws, the head appeared the eighth time. And then another set of 100 draws, it appeared the sixth time. So the replicate function gives you that idea. but I think this is kind of too technical, too manual for us to be doing this. So this is where the rgeom function comes into the scene. Let's go back to the slide. And I think that is where it is. So r provides the a geometric distribution is defined by the probability of occurrence, okay? So like in this instance, we have p inside of the geometric distribution. So it provides us the function rgeom we take in two set of arguments. N will be the number of draws, and then P is the probability of getting your, your first occurrence, the, the first event that you are waiting for. So let's call it the head that you are, you are looking for. So at this point in time, if you go back to the slides, sorry, if you go back to R, and then you use the rgeom function, you can pass in like N equals 10, and then the probability as 0.1. So when you are drawing 10 observations with a 10% chance of getting heads, at what point in time would you be getting head? If you run this, you notice that head appeared how many times? The 10th time. So meaning that we had nine tails and the 10th time we had the head. So we also had the head appearing um, the first time. And you can do that for as many events that you are looking for. So like maybe 100 or uh, let's make it 1,000. So if you run this, oops. So you can see that for 1,000 draws, okay, at what point in time did you get head at a probability of 10%. So for all the thousand draws, for the first instance, we did not get any head for all the thousand draws. That, that is pretty something, right? Now for all the thousand draws, we had head appearing the 38th time. Here, head did not occur at all. Here, it appeared the 34th time. So that is what the algeum function is actually doing. Okay, so you can also do that for 100 draws. You can do that for as many draws as you can. And then you will notice when the head would appear the first time in that distribution. Okay, so you can even go ahead and visualize if you want to. So a histogram, and then you see that chances are that you getting the number of heads will decay further and further um, um, into the future because uh, you are likely to get um, a lot of heads before, uh, sorry, a lot of tails. That's why you see the zero value actually becoming larger because with a 10% probability of getting heads, you most likely would have some number of tails before you get the heads. Okay, so this one would be an instance where maybe for all the 100 draws, we are, we are getting all of them tails and there was no occurrence of head. So you can do that for as many observations that you can. So like for 10,000, you can see it is decaying like that because you are just going to get some number of tails before the number of heads. Now we are, we are getting the same sort of um, graph that I'm running um, for the same row by the second column because we've set our par function right here. Okay, so we have to reset it. So anytime I'm creating a plot, it is just going to lay it out into two rows and two Column. So 
um, when you want to get back to your normal one by one, you can just set it again. So ML flow equals C one comma one, and then so that you can run it and get your your normal default plotting layout. Okay, I would say thank you very much for attending this lesson. Um, the next lecture would actually be on statistical inference. Okay, so hypothesis testing, ANOVA, all the kinds of tests, parametric, non-parametric tests. So at this point, I would call the probability done. And so if you have any questions, I'm ready to receive them. Thank you very much for attending this meeting.